Hello YouTube, this is a quick little tutorial and overview of uh, AS Rock or AS Rock, whatever you want to call it. That's the brand now that the motherboard manufacturer. And I currently have an AMD VNOM 965 processor. Now this is an AS Rock A80G Extreme 3 motherboard, so it is like four or five years old now. Um, this is a program on the older model motherboards that you can get in the website that shows you like your PC health and your PC uh, specs and sensors and your fans and stuff like that and it's got all, all these uh, controls on it as well so I'll be explaining what each of them does and if you have the same program you can learn a little bit from this um, again you know it's a uh, you have to have an AS Rock motherboard I believe and then also the supported processor it's a little bit of a pain to set up um, if you have any other CPU programs that you'd recommend post them in the comments below Anyway, so CPU temp, that's basically the temperature of your CPU overall. Um, I think, I believe that's like the average of the cores, because if you have a multi-core CPU, then it takes this, uh, the sensor of each core and then puts it into one. And then this right here is not your actual temperature. This is like, let's say your CPU goes 50 Celsius, then it'll tell the program to ramp up the fans automatically for you. So if it is getting a little bit hot. Motherboard temperature, that's basically the sensor on your motherboard that tells uh, that tells you the temperature inside the case. So that's usually inside the case. Um, not really sure where my sensor is on my motherboard. It's somewhere though, that's all I know. And then CPU fan, uh, as long as you have like a three or four pin uh, CPU fan, I'm not sure which one it is, then you can control it and you can see the RPMs on there. Uh, usually if you ramp up the fans, they'll get louder, but they'll have more airflow. I have a Cooler Master Evo 12 or 212 Plus Hyper. And then that, not in the exact order, but that's what it is. So, nice and quiet. Very nice aftermarket cooler. And then the rest of these are my case fans. These are my 230 millimeter blue LED fans. I believe this is the top one, and then this is the front. And then I also have my back turbo fan, which is also really silent. And then power fan, that's like, um, I had that on my old case. It's kind of like the exhaust fan a bit. So hardware monitor, that's basically like your voltages and your speeds and stuff like that. Um, most of this stuff should be pretty normal by default. Uh, once you start overclocking, it's going to change a little bit. Um, HT link ratio. Not exactly sure what that is, but when I messed with it, I crashed my whole system, so don't worry about that. PCIe overclocking, I believe that's to hook up to your graphics card. I don't, I wouldn't mess with that either. But uh, here's where you overclock your CPU, and um, overclocking your CPU frequency will make, will try to make your motherboard and other components run faster to compete with that and to uh, actually work with it. So what happens is that your system gets unstable and it crashes. So I just recommend you upgrade a CPU multiplier. Um, for me, overclocking my AMD VNUM, it doesn't make my computer any faster. It doesn't give me any extra FPS in a game. So I'm like, if I'm consuming all this extra power, it's not really producing more heat because I have a really good aftermarket cooler. Is it really worth it? Not really. Even if it was, if it was squeezing like 1-3 frames per second, it still wouldn't be worth it. I might consider it if it's like 5 or 10. Or higher than that. So CPU voltage, mine is originally 1.45. I put it down because it runs better like that, and it still runs completely stable. So my motherboard is probably overvolting it, as it is by default, which is also kind of bad. So you want to manually put that down. Um, it's not necessarily uh, underclocking. It's kind of putting less electricity into the CPU and it gets rid of the extra electricity that it doesn't need. So it saves on your power bill. Um, doesn't sacrifice any performance at all. As long as it runs stable, then it's fine. Uh, CPUs do tend to use more power when they're under load though. So I would recommend you run something like Prime95, a, like a huge CPU trust test program. Maybe run it for a couple minutes straight or an hour, whatever you want, and see if you're overclock and your voltages are stable. Usually if you want to do an overclock you want to increase this voltage so let's do that for an example. So let's ramp up our voltage. Let's turn up our multiplier. 
So now our CPU is 3.7 gigahertz, but I want to turn this back down. So that's a little easy way to overclock for you guys. Um, DRAM voltage, that's basically your RAM voltage. I wouldn't mess with that either. I believe it, mine is supposed to be 1.45. Um, it should be normal though. These can be a little bit off sometimes. Uh, GPU voltage, uh, you can turn that up if you want to, if you want to overclock your graphics card but it can make it run unstable and if you do it too much then you can burn out your graphics card. Um, so yeah, there's that side port voltage. Uh, I don't think that's important. NB, I'm not sure what that is in HT voltage. I believe that's this thing right here, the HT link ratio. So yeah guys, that's a quick overview of this and one more thing is that you also have your uh, CPU speed up here. 3400 uh, 7 megahertz, which is 3.4 gigahertz, or 3,400,000 hertz, and then you also got your CPU fan and chassis. And then when this goes up, it fills around the rain. And if it goes to max, then it'll just reset itself back to minimum and keep vice versa. I shouldn't do that too many times, though. So, anyways, guys, that's a quick little overview of this. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you have like a similar motherboard to me and similar processor, I recommend you get this program. Uh, it supports it very nicely. It's just you need to figure out what your correct CPU is. Otherwise, this program can potentially really mess things up badly if you get the wrong one because it's set to a certain model. So I greatly recommend this program. It's really old though. Uh, it tends to crash a little bit. Um, it does support Windows 7 just fine. I have Windows 7. I'm not sure about Windows 8. Um, so that would be pretty much it. Don't forget to like this video. Also, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and also leave a comment if you'd like. Um, so yeah, give it a like if you like this video. Give it a dislike if you don't like it. And go ahead and post in the comments if you'd like for additional information or questions or whatever. Anyways, guys, see you later. And thanks for watching.